All right, thank you guys so much. Um, my name is Johnny Long. Let me just to give you a brief introduction. Um, so here's the bullet points. Uh, my name is Johnny Long. I am a college dropout. Give a nod to this guy. And uh, I'm actually proud of that now. Thank you. I feel great. Um, I did actually turn out okay, which is what I tell my kids when they say, well, I want to be a college dropout. I'm like, well, there's no guarantees, right? <laughs> um, I, I actually, I had a career as a professional hacker. So I broke into government and commercial buildings and facilities and networks. Um, so I, I've, everybody asked me, hey, did you ever hack, you know, fill in the blank? The answer is probably yes. So I'll just give that as a, as a, as a blanket answer. My formal education was actually online. Okay, that's where, that's where I learned the bulk of my skills. Um, so uh, what is a hacker? You know, in the context of, of our discussion here, it's pretty relevant. Uh, we're techies that come up with wicked solutions to very difficult problems. Okay, we're, we're not criminals that, you know, just break into places. Well, if we solve problems, what's the problem? This is the problem. And I've heard it echoed here tonight a bit, is that not everybody can get access to the content that's available online. There's unbelievable stuff out there, you know, but not everybody can get access to that, okay? So what are we doing? Uh, what's this presentation about? What's this little project about? This is about standing in the gap for uh, especially the kids um, that are looking at the inevitable, you know? Um, Tomorrow's most successful students will successfully navigate the massive amount of organized educational online content. It's a fact. You, you can't be a star student and you know, come out ahead of this game without touching any of that online content, that stuff that's out there. Well, what about the kids that uh, will have access, say in the next few years, to massive bandwidth like we're hearing about all over the place? But right now, they don't have the skills that are going to let them navigate that content. They don't have the basic technical skills to understand how to use a computer, how to navigate you know, websites, that kind of stuff. So our answer is, well, let's bring that training to them in the meantime until the bandwidth is there and they're able to get online and take advantage of this themselves. So that brings us to hackers and .edu's. We've used. Um, GCFLearnFree.org is a great resource for technical training. We've used it, there's a lot of other ones out there, but we've used this one for the past four years in Jinja, where I live right now, to basically train hundreds of students in basic computer skills. Okay, but these guys went ahead and actually made this available offline. So we have an offline version of this. You know, it teaches everything from uh, basics, typing, to you know, all the office stuff, to what is Facebook, what's a website, what's a blog. What's Gmail? What are Google Docs? All of that stuff. And it's available offline to give them the basic skills they need. Well, we're just techies. We're not educators. So we have to work with educators and basically ask them some questions. Okay? We ask them, what do you want as an educator that really knows what you're doing? What works? What doesn't? We, we don't want to, as, as hackers, as techies, we don't want to get into that educational business. We want to leave that to them. And the teachers are basically saying, well, at the front, we need, these, we need access to some resources. You know, we, we need to have a library wherever our students are. And remember, right now, I'm targeting the students that don't necessarily have access to cheap internet or fast internet or both. And the teacher said, well, we like all of this stuff. Okay, so we said, well, um, if you download all that stuff, it's like 32 to 64 gigs. So it gets back to, well, we need more bandwidth you know, or cheaper bandwidth. And, and that's the problem that we're trying to get around here. So basically this organization, Rachel from worldpossible.org has been around for a long time and they took all of these things, now including GCF, and they make it available in an offline package. Okay, so this gets the resources to the places that need it the most. But beyond that, the teacher said, it's nice to have the content, but we need a bit more, right? We need exercises, we need tests, we need the reports, we need curriculum, we need a roadmap. We need to be able to track how our students are going and you know, strengths and weaknesses and how we can help them. And Rachel alone didn't solve that problem. What did in the interim is a program called Cal Light by Learning Equality. And basically Cal Light took the Khan Academy content and added the exercises, added the reports. So a teacher can go in and actually look at how the students are doing not just whether or not they're watching the videos, whether they're getting anything out of it. 
And we put that all together into this lump that we kind of call our core software. This is our core software package for offline deployments. So what's a deployment look like? You have a computer. Does it have 32 to 64 gigs? Yep, we install the content. You do it again, find a computer. Does it have the space? Install the content. I mean, you can see just clicking the button on the slides is tiring. What happens when you have to do this? Move that content to all those machines or God forbid to this. It's not a practical solution. It's, it's an absolute nightmare. So this begged some, some questions, you know, how do we scale this up, you know? Um, how do we deploy this stuff? How do we deploy the updates when the content changes? What about maintenance? What about viruses that start ripping through networks and destroying the content that you took all this time to download somewhere and put on these machines? And of course, the other question is, what about cost? Well, most folks don't have access to this type of hardware, you know, especially in the areas that we're looking at. They have older machines. And, you know, those machines simply can't handle that software. You know, they just don't have enough room. So the folks at Rachel came up with a solution that was putting all that content on a USB stick. Okay? It's not a, a bad solution at all. It's a great idea. It's inexpensive. It's easy to build. You can use existing machines that don't have big hard drives. All you need is a modern browser. Biggest problem that we found, and Daniel can attest to this, is that these things just get wiped out all the time. USB sticks are horrible here. Just gets wiped out by a virus. There goes all of your content, okay? And it's really hard to maintain a clean master copy if you can never plug it into a PC in Africa. <laughs> it's, a, it's a challenge, all right? So this led us to two needs. We need two things. We need a good client to view this stuff on, and we need a good server so that regardless of the machines that you have, they can all share the content from one central location. Pretty straightforward. Our requirements are pretty strict. It needs to be rugged, resilient, completely impervious to viruses, easy to maintain, easy to update, inexpensive, has a field reset for when it breaks, you can get it back to nothing, and no viruses. Again, I'll say that twice. Well, some of the clients that we looked at were things like smartphones and tablets. It's not a bad approach. I mean. Um, Rachel right now can be deployed to a tablet or a smartphone as a server. Now right now you have to buy a $3 piece of software from the Play Store, but again, a smartphone as a server, right? It's, it's not a bad idea. Of course, it has some problems. Um, these are the pros, of course, low power, they're everywhere. You can do a field reset on an Android device to bring it back from the brink of destruction, you know, because stuff happens in the field, we love that. The downsides are that they're very delicate, easy to steal, the quality's all over the place, the browsers are all over the place. It's not, a, it's not a solid market right now in terms of keeping a stable baseline, okay? And it's not really a true server. The client that we landed on in all of our testing was a Google Chromebook. I've got one here tonight that I can show you. The benefits of this is that it's inexpensive, okay? We're talking around 200 US dollars. It's got a field reset like a phone. Something happens to it in the field, you reset it back to, back to zero. We love the fact that um, we can put an SD card in that thing, lock it with super glue, the lock switch on the SD card, and it can never be written to, right? No viruses, you can't get them on the cards, you can't get them on the Chromebook. The guest session is new every single time you reboot. We love it, the only downside is that it's not Windows. So that brings us to the server, okay? Benefits of a server. Easy to upgrade the content, it's easy to scale, right? Less risk of virus corruption. And here's our requirements. We want all of this. Low cost, low power, you know, it's gotta be rugged, durable, easy to maintain, you know, all of that stuff. First thing we looked at was the Raspberry Pi. There's been a lot of discussion around this thing. I love the Raspberry Pi. I hate it in the village. There's no parts. It's very hard to find technicians. You can't maintain this thing, um, but it is cheap, you know, but the downsides were just massive. You don't have a power switch, for goodness sakes. Every time you yank the power out of this thing, you're crashing the system. You're, you're potentially corrupting the server. It had a lot of different problems. So, but it did run Rachel and Kyle Light. Okay, it had that going for it. 
What we did, um, Sam Kinch, one of our guys at Actors for Charity, came up with this thing called the Rugged Pie, or the Pelican Pie. And that's this. This is a beast of a raspberry pie, okay? It's solar powered. It's got a power switch on the side, which actually does a safe shutdown on the thing. It's completely water sealed, okay? It's got a battery inside of it, AC and DC chargeable. This thing answered a lot of the problems that we had with the Raspberry Pi, okay? But the downsides were this is a do-it-yourself project. This is almost as hard, maybe worse in the village than the Raspberry Pi because it's got a lot more move, it's got a lot more parts to go wrong. When you're the builder, it's easy. You know what happened. But this thing really isn't good in the village. Um, it also looks a lot like a bomb. I almost didn't get it in here. <laughs> you guys should be really happy to hear that. All right? So our next solution was to go with something a little bit lighter weight. We went with the OpenWRT platform. Okay, that's you know, a Linux distribution that runs on mobile devices. This is the next iteration. Okay, this is a smaller version of the Rugged Pi. Um, the only, it's based on library box. The link is there. Lots of upsides. You got lots of different types of routers and devices that you can install the educational software on. The downside is it's another do-it-yourself project. You have to know Linux to repair it, to get it up and running, okay? And usually you're just gonna replace this thing. You're not gonna fix it, but it's cheap. But it's still not exactly what we were looking for. What we landed on was a project called Brick. BRCK.com. This is Eric Herzman. Um, he's, uh, he's a graduate from RVA. He's a Kenyan. He's working in Kenya at iHub. Most of you have heard of that place. Eric came up with basically the server that answered all of our problems, and that's the brick. That's this device here. Okay, the upsides. It's off the shelf. It's something that in the next couple months you can buy. It's battery powered. It's rugged, inexpensive, around 200 US dollars, resilient, Field resettable. Now, this isn't field reset like you hit a button. This thing is cloud managed. This thing can be flashed from the cloud, which means you log into your cloud account for this thing. You can push firmware updates. You can push content. You can configure it. You can reconfigure it. You can get it back to life as long as the internal SIM card is working. It's got two SIM cards, one inside you can't touch, and a slot so you can add your own and do internet. Has a lot of the features that we really liked, but the downside is that it doesn't yet have call light. So this is the solution that we landed on, okay? About 440 US dollars. In the last minute that I have, I'm already a little over, last minute that I have, two minutes that I have, let me talk about what's next because we're not quite done with this thing yet. Remember, I said call light doesn't yet run on this thing, so I just threw away all those exercises and all those things that the teachers needed. Well, if you go to khanacademy.org and you log in, right, you get access to all of that stuff that the teachers want on the website. Of course, it's on the internet, right? What we want to do is we want to take a slightly different approach. If you have a student who's accessing Khan Academy online, it's very little bandwidth for them to do the exercises, right? If they get online and they start doing videos, okay, the videos take a little bit more bandwidth. Now, what happens when you've got this? You've got a classroom of students accessing Khan Academy online just doing <coughs> exercises. It's manage a manageable amount of bandwidth. But as soon as all of those students load videos, it's non-optimal. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a problem. Well, what we want to do is we want to kind of move things around a little bit. We want to cache the videos on the brick itself so that students can do the Khan Academy thing like normal with the exercises and it tracks them and you get all the good stuff. But as soon as they go for a video, it comes from the brick, not from the internet. Okay, so you can use this standalone or you can use it in an environment where you have slow internet or expensive internet to get the best of both worlds. And Teachers can log in from the internet, log onto the Khan Academy site and get all that stuff from anywhere in the world. The other thing we want to do is give students the ability to create videos on the Chromebook and upload them, right? Pretty straightforward. Then other students can download them to their machines without an internet connection. We also want to allow teachers from anywhere in the world to transfer content across the internet and transfer it to the brick. 
they can disconnect from the internet and a student can log in and get that content and the student is not online. The student doesn't need internet. Only the teacher does because this is a cloud interface. And the last thing that we want to do is we want to allow other bricks within Wi-Fi range when they get in the presence of a brick that's fully loaded to be able to do a master client sync. So that if they're within Wi-Fi range, they can update each other. That means you only download your repository, whatever it is, Khan Academy or a MOOC or anything like that, one time, you move around with other bricks and they transfer it wirelessly so that they all get the content. This should scale very well. That's our goal is to get it to this point. So you have one machine in a cafe, one brick in a cafe that's got the content. People come in and get the rest of the content from Wi-Fi. We hope it scales like this, you know, but time will tell. So again, this is the solution that we're at right now. Um, this isn't meant to be a definitive guide. We're always open to suggestions, but we've done a ton of trials on a bunch of different platforms, and we found this to really work. It's very resilient. It's cutting edge. We love the fact that the brick is made in Africa, that you can get it here in the next couple months. Um, and here's all the links. Um, the, the reason I put ours big there is, is not because we're more important. It's because if you write down that one link, hackersforcharity.org slash education, you can get to all the other stuff. Okay? So that's what I've got for you. I know I'm over time, but thank, thank you guys. You very much.